Love my pups, my breeder supply. Haven't done a blood pull in a while, so I thought we'd just kind of do a refresher course. We need a one mil syringe, a one mil, it's a little bitty thing, a one mil syringe. We don't want to use a big fat 10 cc syringe or 10 mil syringe. And the reason for that is when you pull this back, you're sucking a lot of blood, tends to block the needle. It what's called hemolytizes, I probably pronounced that wrong, the blood. So we don't want to use a big, we'd much rather use a small one. Okay, we want to use a needle. It's a 22 gauge, 22 gauge, one inch needle. These work beautifully. If you try to use a 30 gauge, which it sounds like it's bigger, but it's actually smaller, that's used for insulin shots, you will not pull blood out of that. So 22 gauge is preferred. 20 gauge, 21 gauge, 23 gauge, it'll work. I like a 22 gauge. So there's our setup. All right, so that's new. It wants to be new every time. If you stick this in a dog, and you try to restick the dog, it'll be blunt, the dog will not like you. All right, so here's our patient. This is Toulouse. So let's pop, pop Toulouse down here. We're gonna pull blood from her arm. And what we're gonna do here is, is we're gonna shave the area because it makes it easier for you to see what's going on when you're doing this. I don't typically shave the arm, but we're gonna do this just for this so that you can get a better idea about what's going on. She, this is the worst part for her is this part right here. The stick is not going to be a big deal. And there we go, we're just going to expose a little area right there. You're okay, Toulouse. Toulouse is a lilac, a lilac and tan plant, and she has beautiful babies. Okay, there we go. Now, we want to clean the area off. We don't want to push any muck into this small little hole we're going to make. So we're going to clean it off really good. You can see she's pretty clean, no hair there. We're going to put a tourniquet on. Here's my homemade tourniquet with a knot in it. This works really nicely in that you can put it in here and you can then put the knot under the loop like that. And that lets you remove it that easily. So I like this technique. You can go get a proper clamp, but I think this works probably better. It's probably easier to do, especially if you're doing it by yourself. All right, there it is. Now, there's the vein. If you pour some alcohol on this, it will generally make the vein stand up more because it tightens the skin up. And now you can see the vein quite nicely there. All right, technique. Bevel side goes up. It goes in at an angle, very shallow angle, looking for a blood flash right here. When we see that, we pull back on this. All right, good to have somebody with their hand behind the elbow so she doesn't try to pull the elbow back. Good light helps. You wanna take your thumb and push the vein to the side. It makes the vein tighten up so it won't roll out of the way. There's the vein, here's the stick, it's slow. There's the flash. And here comes the blood. Go a little bit more. And just wiggle around a little bit, just take your time. I've actually got enough blood there now, but we're gonna get a little bit more. Here it comes, it's a little bit slow. Not a big needle. Sometimes moving things around a little bit will get the blood flowing. And may, you, know, you, you have a tendency to go through the vein if you're not careful. I've actually got enough blood there now. About half a cc is the minimum amount to do a test reliably. You can see it slowly coming in. It's just being slow. She's not complaining. She's a good patient. Walt's doing a great job holding her. All right, there we go. We've got a better part of the middle of blood. This comes off first. This comes out next. Put some pressure on it just for a few seconds, and then come back here and look at the wound here. And it's already stopped, look at that. How's that? Beautiful. Good job, good job. Okay, so now we get to spin this down. So we take, I could use this, this is the one we sell. It's noisy as heck. So I'm gonna put it in this one here because it's a little quieter while I'm talking. So there's our blood, chunk that away. You should probably put a cap on it so nobody gets stuck with it. Put it in the machine. Got to turn it on. <laughs> you should let that blood sit for a bit before you spin it so it coagulates a little bit. You'll have a better job of this. But in the sake of getting things done, uh, we are just going to uh, spin it quickly. Okay. So the next part's going to be running the test and getting the test results out. So our blood's been spun down. And hopefully we've got nice clear syrup. Yep, there it is on the very top. Now it's a little tricky. This machine, this little pipette has to be used. There's two positions, first position, second position. We go to the first position, put it in and pull it back up. So, first position. <laughs> 
Helps if you have the lid taken off. <laughs> Guys are laughing at me. In. There it is. There's our good pull. That's what we want to see. All right, we're now done with that. That now goes into a fresh one of these buffer solutions. So there it goes in there. Now it needs to get mixed up. So you can have a vortex mixer, you can shake it up for 20 seconds, but it needs to be shaken up well. They say it doesn't mix very well. I mean, it looks to me like it mixes very well, but I mean, apparently they say it doesn't. What I do is I take this thing and I kind of cycle it backwards and forwards, take some from the top, some from the bottom, and that really gets it mixed up well. They say to use a new fresh one of these, but if you've done what I'm doing here, I think it's irrelevant because it's filled up with the same stuff. One button down, goes in, lift it up, and there's my pull. All right, done with that. Now comes this. This, obviously a new one every time. When you do this, it's got to go into the machine fairly quickly. There's a little hole here, and in that hole, we put our mixture so it doesn't spill out over the top. And there it goes. And then it goes into the machine, dimple sides on your finger, the little bar end goes in first, goes into the machine. If you can look on top of the machine here, we've got it on standard test. Let me hit start test. And that's it. 15 minutes later, we'll get the results. When you do this, you want to have the machine turned on for 10 minutes before you start the test because it's got to warm up. Can you look in here for a second for us, Lee? It may be hard to see it. But it shows the temperature. The temperature is set, it's gonna, you don't have to set it, but the, the incubator is gonna be set for 25 degrees. And it needs to be close to that number, otherwise it's gonna refuse to do a test. So you definitely wanna turn this thing on. And the reason for this is the moment that you go ahead and put the drops in here, you've gotta get this in here fairly quick. I mean, within 30 seconds, because the timing starts from the moment that goes in there. Okay, so now we, we've loaded the machine up, we kind of pause things for you because we didn't want you to have to watch paint dry because that's what's going on here. Come in here closely if you would. So what we've got is this machine, once all we had to do is put it in the slot, press the start button, wait for 15 minutes, and you can see we've got 22, 21, 20 seconds left on our 15 minute call. And what it's gonna do at the end of that, you hear some noises as it pulls the, uh, the little test into a chamber. It does what's called an imlofluorescent test on it. And it's going to give us the results on the screen and it's going to print it out for us. And who wants to make a prediction? She was at 11.71 yesterday. Anybody want to make a, Lee, want to make a prediction? 13. I think 15. Let's see who's closest. <laughs> I'm going to go 14. Okay, there you go. Here we go. So you saw it do that. And here comes the results. 12.72, Lee wins. Boom. Lee's on the money. <laughs> and here comes the print. Ah, silly printer. There it is. And there, there it prints it out for us. Beautiful. Just beautiful. So now we've got, we can put it in the machine, it stores a record of it with the dog's name if we want to mess with that. But what we do is we just simply, simply stick it. And you can see all these tests that are going on this girl. She is slow going. Four, six, six, 11, 12. She's getting bred today. We wait two days and we breed her again. She's getting bred to hump. Mm -hmm. So wonderful results. Love this machine. I mean, this thing gets us bigger litters. It's great for timing the C-section so we don't mess up and have to do emergency C-sections and pay, you know, the problems of having them in the middle of the night, the problems of paying three times as much for a C-section with a junior member of the staff being there to do it. Even if you're only doing a little bit of stuff, I promise you this machine will save you money and get you bigger litters. And we sell it at www.mybreedersupply. I've asked, had people ask, are these refurbished units? No, we are an authorized distributor. Um, we, we, we sell this, we sell the test kits, we sell the needles, we sell everything you need, we sell centrifuges, everything you need to get this done, it's on my breeder supply, and we support it. If you need help, if you need help with interpretation, if you need help running the machine, you need help getting started, we're just a phone call away. And I don't think I've had a single customer who's had to call this support in Chicago. By the way, the support for this outside of me is in Chicago. It's not overseas. You're talking to somebody who, you know, has got a good command of the language, who knows the product very well, and they are super responsive. Their, their support is excellent. I've only used it a couple of times, and I don't think any of my customers have used it. But anyway, this machine is, is, the, is the bomb. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.